Hello everyone, my name is Andrew, today we're going to see learning Python and today we'll talk about CQRS or Comat Query Responsibility Segregation. So let's start. I'll explain what is CQRS, how do we use it, when we need to use it and how does it work. And CQRS is basically a pattern that splits reads from data changes. So in almost all of the programs we have two types of comments. The first type is comments or queries to our database that change the information, so we update, delete, or create our information. And the second type is comments that do not change anything, but they just read the information. For example, if you are talking about simple, simple shop, we have a comment that uh, can get a list of products, and we have a comment that can I don't know, update our user information. So those are two different comments, and CQRS, or Comment Query Responsibility Segregation, basically means that we split reads from data changes. So all of the comments that only read data are divided into separate group, into separate classes, methods, functions, and so on. And all of the comments that update data are divided into a separate group. So how does it help us and why do we need it? If your logic is really, really complicated, so you have tons of functions, you have tons of methods, and you can't really work with one class that, um, for example, uses your users, or works with your users, updates your users, creates your users in your tables. You can't really work with that one class. What you can do is split your reads and writes into separate objects. And if you do that, it's going to be really, really helpful for you because now you know that user read service, so your class user read service, is only responsible for the comments that read data from the user. And user write service is only responsible for the comments that that create your users, update your users, or change your users. And that's basically the idea of CQRS. So the first thing is that it can help us in terms of our architecture, so in terms of our code. It may be cleaner, but be sure that your logic is really, really complicated enough. Because if you have a simple program and you split your comments in uh, reads and writes, then you may end up with lots of classes that you don't really need. Your logic should be, should be complicated enough in order for you to split your uh, objects in different reads and writes classes. All right, so that is the first idea. The second idea is that it can bring a lot of scalability solutions. So imagine that you have a program where we only have 10,000 writes a day, so we, our users only change 10,000 entries of data a day, but we have millions of users that want to read our data. So reads overperform our write operations. And um, what we can do in that case is split our reads into a separate application, into a separate service, or even into a separate, yeah, into a separate service. So in separate repositories and separate projects and uh, split our writes as well. And if we do that, what we can perform is um, we can, for example, use 100 servers for reads because read or read operations are perform write operations. So we have tons of read operations, like a million, two million a day, and they only have 10,000 operations for writes. So we split our reads into separate servers and we split our writes into other servers, other clouds, and so on. And what it can bring to us is that we can put 100 servers for read operations and only 10 servers for write operations. So scalability can be also a very, very huge thing for that. CQRS is widely used in microservices and uh, you know that microservices are, in most of the cases, are scalable and um, CQRS helps us a ton in that matter. And uh, the last idea that, um, the last idea, yes, yeah, scalability is great, but the last idea that um, is related to CQRS is security. So security is um, very, very important, but it's kind of like a side effect of CQRS. Because if we split writes from reads, what we can actually do is create two separate users for our database, one user that can change our data and another user that can read our data. And um, as I said, we can split uh, our writes and reads into separate servers. And if we do that, what we can do is give the servers that can update our information, the users that can update our information, so servers that uh, change the data will be able to do that, but servers that only read the data will not. And it can, it can be a huge thing for security, but it's kind of like a side effect. So we can basically split our permissions and it may be helpful in some applications. You don't really need to use CQRS on every instance of your application because CQRS is a pattern and you only need to apply it whenever you really need to. If your logic is complicated enough or you want to scale reads and writes separately, then it's a great choice. But other than that, 
CQRS can bring up lots of problems. The first problem is that CQRS can have millions of questions. So you are going to end up with double the amount of questions you had before. And for some applications, it's not beneficial. All right, so for now, let's just stop with that because CQRS is a really big topic. It's kind of like the basic pattern that allows you to really write microservices even further. And uh, we're going to stop with that. And I'm going to show you the code example in Python. Let's go. All right, so here is our code. What do we have here is a simple data quest. And if you don't know about data quests, then you can watch my other video. But basically, it's a quest that uh, represents your can represent your schema. In our case, it represents our user, which has ID as an integer, username as a string, and password as a string as well. All right, then we have a comment. I will explain it a little bit later. And we also have our user service. So user service is a quest that will, will allow us to work with our database. In our case, database is just a simple list. And um, yeah, it can be, in Securus, it uh, should not only be a database, but it can also be a caching system, it can be, those can be files, so you really need to just split reads from writes, and the data source can be anything. In our case, it's gonna be a list. And we have create user function here, which accepts username and password, and appends a new user to our users array, and it returns none as the result. And we also have get user function, which accepts an index and returns the user on that index. Very, very simple quest. So that is CRUD because we can, well, not CRUD, but those are simple applications that all of you write. With CQRS, we are gonna split that function from get user. So create user from get user, because create user is a function that updates information, and get user is a function that reads information. In terms of updates and reads information, we have different names for that, because CQRS, Command Query Responsibility Segregation. So I think you know what is responsibility segregation, because it's intuitive responsibility segregation and we split our reads from writes. So we, yeah, responsibility segregation is intuitive. We just segregate reads and writes. But what are comments and queries? So comment, query, responsibility, segregation. Comment and query are different types of methods and functions. So comment is a function that updates your state but does not return anything. And query is a function that does not update your state but returns your DTO, so returns an object that can be used to send it to the user, so basically returns your data. So once again, comment updates information, but returns nothing. And query does not update the information, so does not change the state and returns an object that we are gonna use. In our case, if you're gonna look at that, create user is a common, because create user updates our state, it appends a user, but does not return nothing. In our case, it's gonna be none. In other languages like um, C++, C Sharp, it's going to be void. So return void. Well, not return void, but void as, um, yeah, void. We don't return nothing. That's the most um, important thing. And get user is an example of a query because get user does not update anything, but returns our user at that index. So basically what we need to do is instead of writing that one class, we're going to have to copy our comments and copy our queries and split them into different classes. And once again, it can be not like classes, it can be different functions, different modules, can be different applications, different repositories, whatever you like. You just split your reads from writes. And for every program, it's different. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is create a user's array as a global object. And then I'm gonna create class user. And uh, let's start with command service. So as you can see, user command service. That service is gonna run comments. Therefore, it's going to update the state and all the functions will return none as the result. Let's copy create user. Let's pass it here. And um, yeah, instead of self users, I'm going to just use users as a global object. I'm going to need to do that because I'm going to have user common service. And after that, after I put every comment that updates the information here, I'm going to create user, user query service. And here, I'm just going to copy that, like that. Uh, yeah, I didn't do it, all right, like that, and like that. And here I'm going to do my get user function, and instead of self user, I'm just going to return my users from an index. And that is the only thing that you need to do in order to split your reads and writes in a very simple application. So now we have different classes, and if I want to create a view that is going to read my user information, so get get user info. 
we have request here, like in almost any framework, and we return our user query service, user query service from get user 10, for example. So that is how we are going to use it. And we know that user query service can't update any information because it's only used in order to query things from our database. CQRS is really, really simple, and that's the basic pattern for other things in microservices because you can't really do much without, well, you can, but sometimes it's really, really hard to do something without that pattern. It's um, even more complicated if your logic is really, really, really yeah, complicated. So Securus is basically that pattern. You can use it as you wish. And what I want to say in addition is that you can use Securus not only as a pattern in your programming language, but you can also split your uh, databases, for example, you can create one database, which is going to be a master and one database, which is going to be a slave. So master is only going to be used in order to update the information. So update the info and slave is only going to be used in order to read the information. What you can also do is split user command service and user query service into different programs. And uh, after that, you can set up that your user query service. So the program that uh, uses user query service only works with the slave and the program that uses user common service only works with the master. So you're going to have a server which is connected to the master and another server which is connected to the slave. And that can really, really, really improve your workload. But of course, it depends on your application. And if you have a very simple crude application like you have it here, you don't really need to split your commons into different services, into different um, programs, repositories and all of that stuff. And by repositories, I do not mean the repository pattern. I mean the repository on Git, so projects, different projects. That's all about CQRS. So thank you for the watching. My name is Andrew. Subscribe to my channel, leave a like, leave a comment, and bye-bye.